Welcome to the All About You podcast. My name is Sheila and I am your host. In this podcast, I invite people to tell their stories of their travels, hobbies and passions. These podcasts are also now available on my All About You YouTube channel. So if you have a story to tell, please contact me on All About You podcast at yahoo.com and let's tell your story. Welcome to the All About You podcast. And today we have the second part of my conversation with Jennifer Moore. In our last conversation, we talked about EFT and now we are going to be experiencing some EFT with Jennifer. So Jennifer, welcome back to the podcast. Thank you so much, Sheila. I'm so glad to be back. Well, I'm looking forward to this because this is taking EFT from last week's conversation on to another step. So let's get cracking. Absolutely. So what I wanted to do today was teach you guys the basic recipe of EFT, but I wanted to use it, use it in a particular way that's called the constricted breathing technique so that you could actually experience how EFT affects you in real time because when you're tapping on something emotional or maybe you're tapping on a memory or you're tapping on um oh i don't know like a phobia or something or even a food craving you might not really fully know how the eft has has affected you or impacted you quite exactly as instantly but when it comes to doing tapping on either a physical sensation or range of movement or our breathing, we can experience the differences like as we tap with them. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to just lead you through the tapping points. I believe we did that last time, but I'm gonna lead you through the tapping points again and just show you how the basic recipe works really quickly. We'll review that. And then I'm gonna lead you through the constricted breathing exercise. Um, I mean, I suppose you could just say the breathing exercise for that matter, but a lot of times the reason we call it the constricted breathing exercise is because a lot of times we don't even realize how tight our breath is and how much we are holding our breath and limiting our capacity to breathe. And one of the things I learned long ago when I was actually first studying breath work is that our relationship to our breath directly corresponds to the way we live our life. Our inhale corresponds to our ability to receive and our exhale corresponds to both our ability to let go and also put things back out into the world. So when our breath is constricted, it really inhibits our ability to receive and also our ability to give and our ability to relax and let go. So when we loosen up our breath and free the energy in our breath, it allows us to have more energy to live our lives. And we generally feel better when we're breathing well. So right. let me... Excellent. That was fascinating. It is. It is. I, it is one of my favorite. That I really love using this, especially when first introducing EFT to people. And I know that um, when I do this, I feel better on the other side of doing this exercise. So as I mentioned last time, there's the side of the hand, which is what's called this, which is what we use for our setup. We use the three fingers from one hand and then um, tapping on sort of the fleshy part of the side of the hand. This used to be known as the karate chop point. And so we just tap on the side of the hand and we do the, what's called the setup. And that is the, even though I have this issue, and then we have some kind of a positive neutral statement, like I'm open to the possibility that this can shift or the classic Gary Craig statement, I deeply and completely love and accept myself. And then we do that three times. I personally reverse my hands because that way I keep track of the number of times that I actually do that and don't end up doing four or five setups. And then what we do, then what we do is we start by tapping. I start tapping at the top of the head because I like to think of the energy as like a cascade that is running down. So starting at the top of the head, we just use what's called the reminder phrase and we say this issue, problem, whatever. Then eyebrow points, which is at the top of the eye, sort of right at the brow, sort of right where your glasses would start, kind of right at the right at the top of the eyebrows and sort of bridge of the nose. Side of the eyes, right on the temples, just past your eyelids, 
under the eye, right on the bone socket underneath your pupil, under the nose, which is right under your nose and above your lip on what some people call the cupid's bow, other people, or the medical term is the philtrum, and then below the lip, between the chin, sort of in that groove between your lip and your chin, and then collarbone points. You feel for your clavicle and then just kind of move out by maybe an inch, inch or two. You can kind of, if you just sort of tap around and feel sort of the sore spots, you can usually tell where that is. And then under the arm, right sort of going parallel from your armpit and parallel from where your nipple would be, kind of past the breast tissue if you are female and kind of just on the parallel to, like I said, parallel to the armpit on the rib cage and then back to the top of the head. Those are the points with the EFT. Do you have any questions before we jump into constricted breathing? I think that's all good. And I know we are going to include a diagram of the tapping points. Yes, we are going to include class, a diagram yeah. of the tapping points. Yes, absolutely. And that will certainly help quite a bit. Yes, I also do have some on my YouTube channel. I have um, demonstrations where I take people through like step by step by step. So if somebody wants to do a tap along, they can come on over to my YouTube channel as well, which I'm sure, you know, they will be able to find through links on the show notes. OK, so what we're going to do right now is first step when it comes to EFT is assessing what's going on and recognizing what is actually happening for us. And so with the breathing technique, what we need to do is we need to evaluate how our breath is right now. So what you and I are both going to do right now is we're just gonna take in, we're gonna breathe in and we're gonna breathe out and we're just gonna notice our capacity for breathing. So just noticing if it's feeling tight, if it's feeling loose, like how full does your breath feel like it can be? And if you were to sort of give it a percentage of capacity of what you imagine your breathing capacity is, what do you think your breathing, like your, your breath capacity is at right now? I feel it's probably about a six, but I could actually sort of had the sensation of feeling my heart beating as I was breathing in and mm. out because I was paying attention. You were paying attention. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. So if that was between a zero and a 10 and you felt a six, that would be at about 60% capacity. I would say mine feels like it's at about 70% capacity right now. So now I'm actually going to teach you another way to rate your breath, which is something that I started doing with some of my students and some of my clients a while ago, which is using a count to just see how long, you know, like how how long our inhale and our exhale is. So we're going to do another breath. And this time, as you inhale, I want you to just in your mind sort of count the beats of how how many beats you get for an inhale. And then when you exhale, I just want you to count the beats for your exhale. So we're going to do another inhale and you're just going to in your mind just count how many number like how you know can you get to six can you get to 10 can you get to you know 15 so Does that makes sense number before we feel we need to exhale so you're so uh, no actually it's as you inhale in your mind count how many beats you get inhaling right and then you don't need to count for the hold Right. And then as you exhale, count to see how many you get for the exhale. So it would not be uncommon for somebody to get like a six on the inhale and maybe an eight on the exhale. Or sometimes if you have somebody who's like, uh, I've got a, a student of mine who's a um, professionally trained singer. So she is never below like a 15 in and like an 18 out or ah, something okay so and this so is on your normal breath in and it's your normal breath in and your normal, breath, in right. and your normal okay. breath out so we're just noticing the count of our inhale and our exhale so we're just you and i are both okay. going to just do an inhale and count in your mind and whenever you're ready exhale and count your exhale And what did you get? 
OK, well, I counted five in and six out. Mm -hmm. I have mm -hmm. no idea where that is on the scale, whether that's good, bad, normal. You know, it's it, the reason why we call the um, SUDS is or is the subjective units of distress scale is that this is completely subjective. And so certainly your counting, like the pace at which you count is your natural pace. But the thing is that it's your rating or gauging to yourself. And what I find is that most of us have a certain, you know, pace at which we count and we're not necessarily going to speed it up or slow it down with our breath. So we now know that your inhale is a five in and a six out. And that is a pretty standard place for people to start when they're doing this breathing. As you did those two, those three breaths, because the first breath just to feel it, and then this one, did you notice anything about your breath? Like, was there any quality to it that you would set, you would use to describe it? I, I think the main thing was how difficult it is to actually just count your breath in mm -hmm. and count your breath out. It's not something we normally do. So no. you're very conscious thinking, am I breathing correctly? Should I be sitting more upright? Those are things I was thinking about. I love that. But yeah, so and actually the am I sitting upright? Am I doing this right? Exactly. That is probably I wouldn't be surprised if if you know a, a sort of a rabbit hole that we could go down in terms of tapping in that I would imagine if you're asking yourself am I breathing correctly? Am I doing this right? Probably this is a question you're asking yourself in a lot of other places too. You know, so this would be, but I think it's, that is a really a, a wonderful thing because obviously your mind is engaging with your breathing as well. Were there any physical sensations that you noticed at all? You said you noticed your heart, right? Yes, definitely yeah. noticed my heartbeat. Yes. And I think it's very interesting that you've picked up because I am actually a bit of a perfectionist. Mm -hmm. So straight away I went, Oh, should I be sitting more upright? Maybe I should be standing. Are my shoulders slouched? So I'm looking to get the perfect posture to do this exercise. So you picked up on me very well there, Jennifer. And well, and that's the beauty of EFT is that so often we will notice if we just listen to the dialogue or the things that we're saying to ourselves, they are so, there's usually, there's so much more to them than necessarily just like the inhale and the exhale, but that there's like, there's so, it's so amazing how, I don't know if nuanced would be the right word, but just like how, but also how we communicate with ourselves subconsciously about the things that kind of make us tick. So what we're going to do right now is we're just going to do a setup statement. And I'm wondering, does it feel like your breath is at all constricted or tight or um, limited? Because and the reason I'm asking you this is that I'm just trying to think of what we'll use as a reminder phrase. Yeah. For me personally, I've been sitting at my desk for probably about the last four hours. Mm. So typically working on the computer, shoulders up round your ears, terrible posture etc etc so i just feel i need to sort of loosen up and have a bit of a stretch now yes yes i'm just thinking actually maybe before we even tap on your breath what we tap on is the fact that your shoulders are up so if you were to right now just sort of notice how your shoulders feel with zero being like just sort of at baseline where you're just at that perfect still point and your shoulders are exactly where they need to be and 10 being just the most intense like up in your ears that they've ever been how would you rate your shoulders right now i think they're probably about a seven because i can feel the tension from my shoulders into my neck which is totally typical when you're you're working on a computer at a absolutely, absolutely. No, no shops there <laughs> Okay, so, okay, you guys, I'm, I'm throwing a curveball in here because what I'm thinking we're going to do is, and this is one of the beautiful things about EFT, is that EFT is very, it's very simple, but it's also very versatile. And so one of the 
premises or the basic, basic approaches with, with the way that I was taught to do EFT through EFT International is that we follow where somebody is and we listen to what is going on for them. And so it seems like before we could even necessarily go into the breathing for Sheila, we want to acknowledge the fact that you've been sitting at a desk for four hours already and your shoulders are really up. You can feel the tension in your neck. And so I'm imagining it's almost like that is the that that's what you're noticing right now. It's like you can't even necessarily notice the fullness of your breath because of this tension. So what I'd love to do is actually start by doing a round of tapping on your shoulders and the tension in your neck. How would you say so how would you describe what you're, you're like, you know, would you say it's even though my shoulders are up and there's tension in my neck? Would that be an accurate yes, way to describe yes. it? Yes, I, I know it's going to be like a temporary, a temporary sensation because mm -hmm. I have been sitting at the desk for so long. Yes, yes. So what do you say we do a little bit of tapping and how does I'm open to the possibility that this can shift feel for a balance statement? Yep, sounds good. Excellent. OK, so even though I've been sitting at a desk for four hours, even you though I've been you. sitting at a desk for four hours. And my shoulders are up. And my shoulders are up. And I feel this tension in my neck. And I can feel the tension in my neck. I'm open to the possibility that this can shift. I'm open to the possibility that this can shift. Next, we're just going to switch hands, even though. Even though. I've been sitting at a desk for four hours. Even though I've been sitting at a desk for four hours. And my shoulders are up. And my shoulders are up. And I can feel tension in my neck. And I can feel tension in my neck. I'm open to the possibility that this can shift. I'm open to the possibility that this can shift. So even though. So even though. I've been sitting at my desk for four hours. I've been sitting at my desk for four hours. And my shoulders are up. And my shoulders are up. And I can feel the tension in my neck. And I can feel the tension in my neck. I'm open to the possibility that this can shift. I'm open to the possibility that this can shift. Now we're going to go to the top of the head. My shoulders are up and I feel tension in my neck. My shoulders are up and I can feel the tension in my neck. Eyebrows, shoulders up, tension in my neck. Shoulders up, tension in my neck. Side of the eyes, shoulders up, tension in my neck. Shoulders up, tension in my neck. Now we're going under the eyes, shoulders up, tension in my neck. Shoulders up, tension in my neck. Now under the nose, shoulders up, tension in my neck. Shoulders up, tension in my neck. Under the lip, shoulders up, tension in my neck. Shoulders up, tension in my neck. Collarbones, shoulders up, tension in my neck. Shoulders up, tension in my neck. And under the arms, shoulders up, tension in my neck. Shoulders up, tension in my neck. And now back to the top of the head and let's take a deep breath. And now as you breathe, actually do another breath and just notice. Your capacity for breath was at about a six. What do you think it is right now? I'm still breathing out. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. I think that that's probably gone up to about an eight, eight and a half. Amazing. We didn't even talk about breathing. We just talked about shoulders and neck tension. Now, when we started your shoulders and to neck, was it about a seven? What do you think it is now? I think it's probably, I don't know. I think it's gone to about a four. That's amazing. What I found really useful there, Jennifer, is the vocabulary I could feel my shoulders coming down just using the vocabulary, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. which I didn't expect. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and this is where really listening to the person who is speaking and who want, you know, listening to the tapee, as it were, is part of the is such an incredibly important thing because you're the person who said that your shoulders were up. So by responding and using your exact words, then what happens is your subconscious is responding to your messages, not me like trying to translate the language or the words from me to you. And so that's one of the reasons why 
when we have these conversations or as I'm setting up doing the setup statement and getting ready for tapping, I will ask clarifying questions just to be sure that we're really dialing it in precisely for you because that really makes it much more effective when we're doing EFT. And if somebody's ever been on like you know sort of on the internet and found a tap along video and they tried doing the tap along video and just parroting the words that this person on the video is saying and it doesn't really do it a big reason for that is because you're not using your own language and you're not dialing into what is really going on for you so that's a big part of why it makes such a difference and I think we talked about that last week when we were talking about the setup statements, yeah. as in make it yours. Make it yours. Make exactly. it yours. Yeah. And so this is making it yours in actual real time now. So the fact that we've still got a four, I think I'd like to do one more round of tapping on this four and see where it goes. Now, did you notice anything as we tapped those last time, shoulders up and tension in my neck, did you notice anything else that sort of was important or relevant? Did anything sort of come to the surface for you? I think one thing I did notice is all of a sudden my shoulders felt wider, mm. as in you know, more breath was getting in there or more space because I guess when we have tension our shoulders are up to our neck and we're, we're decreasing that amount of space across the front of the collarbone and i just felt that getting a little bit wider mm -hmm. i guess as the shoulders drop as the shoulders go down sense. yes absolutely and i will just full confession i am i i am a queen of shoulders up to my ears and and I have a, I've done a lot of visual art over my lifetime. And one of the things that I would notice was that there would be times where I'd be so deep in concentration that I'd realize my shoulders were really up high. And then even like I'd be working with my arms like in front of me. And I've had to make a very deliberate point of making sure I lower my elbows and I lower my shoulders and I let my whole body just sort of relax because it is so easy to be in that sort of up state. So how about we tap again? Okay. So even though I've been sitting at my desk for four hours. Even though I've been sitting at my desk for four hours. And my shoulders are still up at a four. And my shoulders are still up at a four. And I still feel a little, do you still feel a little bit of tension in your neck? Yeah, there's still a bit there, yeah. And there's still a bit of tension in my neck. And there's still a bit of tension in my neck. I'm noticing that my shoulders feel wider. I'm noticing that my shoulders feel wider. And that there's more breath getting in. And there's more breath getting in. I'm open to the possibility that this can shift even more. I'm open to the possibility that this can shift even more. So even though I've been sitting at my desk for four hours. So even though I've been sitting at my desk for four hours. My shoulders were up at a seven. My shoulders were up at a seven. Now they're down to a four. Now they're down to a four. So I can see this is shifting. So I can see this is shifting. And I've noticed my shoulders feel wider. And I've noticed my shoulders are wider. And there's more breath getting in. And there's more breath getting in. I'm open to the possibility that this can shift even more. I'm open to the possibility that this can shift even more. So even though. So even though I've been sitting at my desk for four hours, even though I've been sitting at my desk for four hours and when I started tapping, my shoulders were up at a seven. And when I started tapping, my shoulders were up at a seven. And I could feel tension in my neck and I could feel tension in my neck. Now they're down to a four. Now they're down to a four and my shoulders feel wider and my shoulders feel wider. And I have more breath getting in. And I have more breath getting in. I'm open to this, the possibility that this can shift even more. I'm open to the possibility that this can shift even more. Shoulders up, tension in my neck. Shoulders up, tension in my neck. Shoulders still up, tension in my neck. Shoulders still up, tension in my neck. Shoulders still a little bit up. Shoulders still a little bit up and tension in my neck and tension in my neck shoulders still a little bit up shoulders still a little bit up and tension in my neck 
and tension in my neck. Shoulders up, 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 tension in my neck. Let's take a deep breath. How does your breath feel now? It was at a, we started at a six, then it was like an eight, eight and a half. What does it feel like now? I think it feels about a nine now. Amazing. That's wonderful. And what about the tension in your neck and your shoulders up? It was a four. What do you think it is now? Oh, my goodness. I would say it's probably about a two. Mm. And I can feel the tension in my jaw has lessened, which I didn't realize I even had before. But I guess shoulders, neck, jaw, absolutely yeah, makes all sense. all interconnected and lungs. Yeah. My God. This is the interesting thing here, Jennifer. I've used the EFT before on issues and circumstances. I've never used it on feelings of tension or I guess you can use this if you're feeling tired. Mm-hmm. The power of using that on those sort of sensations. It's amazing. And what I absolutely love about using EFT for physical sensations is that you can track it in real time and you can notice a shift that is often very, very significant. And what I love about this is that EFT can absolutely be used for releasing stress and tension in our body. It can be used for releasing pain. It can be used for even like reacting to, you know, a food, like a food sensitivity or hay fever or some kind of reaction. I actually really came into using EFT personally a great deal because I had a lot of food and fragrance sensitivities. And if I ate the wrong food, I would be sneezing and sneezing and sneezing and just my body would be in a state of distress. And I found that a couple rounds of tapping and I could help my body to reset and regulate and really settle down. I love using tapping for physical sensations because it is so powerful and so effective. And so far, I have found it to be pretty effective for pretty much anything that has been, you know, impacting me personally. Welcome to the power of EFT for physical sensations. I think the thing that has struck me with this, this breathing experience, Jennifer, is when we get stressed, when we get uptight or, or when we have a problem, our breathing tends to be incredibly shallow, mm -hmm. which then affects the oxygen going to our brain. It will then affect how you hold your shoulders. You might clench your jaw. All these other things that will happen purely because of your breath. You may be holding your breath. We often do that if we're stressed. But to have a, a system which is, I think, pretty simple. Yes. That can work on the breath quite a simple way. You know, you've got your setup statement and you've got your your script that is relevant to you. And then you can fit. I felt it in my jaw even though we were concentrating on neck and shoulders. Right, right. So right. I can really see once you start to sort of control the breath, you're using the vocabulary, we are concentrating in our particular instance here on the neck and shoulders, but I felt it in the jaw as well, which yeah. I didn't even realise there was tension there before. As the saying, the old saying goes, the head bone's connected to the leg bone. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. It's amazing how it's all so interconnected. And you mentioned something about when we're stressed out, we constrict our breath. When we are feeling tension, we tend to inhibit our breathing. The thing is that in the same way 
that when we go into fight or flight mode and sort of the amygdala, that part of our brain that's in charge of running our adrenaline and dealing with our fight or flight, when the amygdala has been hijacked or is is running on, you know, sending out the danger Will Robinson signals, then that inhibits, that puts blinders on us. It sort of diverts blood from our brain and really sort of puts everything into our ability to fight or flee. And the tendency to sort of contract our breath at the same time that we're in these kind of tense situations really, again, is another thing that prevents us from being able to function or handle stress in the most resilient way. So with EFT, not only are we helping to reset that fight or flight mechanism within ourselves, we're also allowing our body to expand into our breath, relax, and then we can handle stress in a much, much better way because we are able to see more options, more possibilities, and think more clearly about how do we want to navigate something, even if it is really tense and dangerous. And I think that, you know, that is true for us in our personal life. It can be true in our, it can be true in our work life. It can be true in sort of a larger, broader scale of what's going on in the world around us, that when we can relax and breathe through it, it doesn't mean the situation isn't serious and we need to deal with it. But what it means is that we then have the resilience and the perspective to handle it in a much more resourced way. And so that's the thing about tapping is it gives us back our resources. I mean, this is such a powerful thing to have in our toolkit, isn't it? It is. It is. This is why I changed my entire life, because I love this so much. And I think it really is one of the most powerful and effective tools I have ever, ever found for turning our and for shifting our life. And the beauty of it is we can do it ourselves. I mean, this is what we said when we were initially talking last week about EFT. You don't need to go anywhere. You mm -mm. don't need to buy anything. You don't need any special equipment. Mm -mm. You can you can follow a script. We can go onto your YouTube channel or we can write our own script. There is no right or wrong. And it's the best thing is to make it yours. Make it yours, exactly. And then adjust it to whatever circumstance or, or whatever situation is, make it yours. Yes, if there's one wrong thing, I would say it would be trying to force yourself into somebody else's script and trying to make somebody else's script work for you if it really doesn't resonate. The best thing we can do is listen to ourselves. So let's actually try doing it, the count of the inhale and the, inhale and the exhale again and see what it looks like now. So we're going to just do another inhaling and counting. Whenever you're ready, exhaling and counting. I felt it was an eight going in and an 11 coming out. Oh my goodness, that's amazing. From a five going in and a, and a six going out, we are now at an eight going in and 11 going out. Thing is, as well, Jennifer, it was smoother. Smoother, like exactly. The breath going in and the breath coming out was smoother. It seemed effortless. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. What do you say we do a little bit of tapping and see if we could possibly open it up even more? Oh, my goodness. Hmm. Really challenging now. Really? Uh-huh. So even though I've noticed my breath has opened up and is smoother, so even though I notice my breath has opened up and it's smoother. I'm open to the possibility that it can open up even more. I'm open to the possibility that it can open up even more. And that it can be even more smooth and easy. And it can be even more smooth and easy. I wonder, is there anything else we want to tap in as a positive statement for you? I think I'm noticing that my voice has dropped down as well. Wow. I guess that's with yeah. the, the, the breathing. It yes. just was a little bit lower and yes. a little bit more easy. Yes. 
Yes. Yeah, when we shift, speed, you know, when we, we stop sounding like Minnie Mouse, <laughs> where our voice can just sort of relax. I definitely notice that my voice goes down when I'm more, when my body is more relaxed and my breath is more open. How about I'm open and maybe I can love myself through this? I'm open and maybe I can love myself through this. Yes. How's that feel? Mm, yeah. What feel right to you? With that as the others, I think. Okay. I think it's getting over this I love myself thing, which is sort of the traditional. Yeah, exactly. Switch, and we talked about that last yeah, exactly. week. Exactly. Uh, so is there anything that you would like to claim? Maybe it would be maybe I could relax even more. Yes, let, let's let's relax even more. My yeah, maybe I can relax. <laughs> Excellent. So even though. So even though. When I started, my breath was a five in and a six out. So even though when I started, my breath was a five in and a six out. Now it's an eight in and an 11 out. Now it's an eight in and 11 out. I'm open to the possibility that this can shift even more. I'm open to the possibility that this can shift even more. And that my breathing can be even more smooth and easy. And that my breathing can be even more smooth and easy. And that I can relax even more. And that I can relax even more. So even though. So even though. When I started, my breathing was an inhale of five and an exhale of six. So when I started, my breathing was an inhale of five and an exhale of six. Now it's an eight in and an 11 out. Now it's an eight in and an 11 out. And I notice that it is smoother. And I notice it is smoother. And that it's easier to breathe. And that it's easier to breathe. I'm open to the possibility that this could get even easier. I'm open to the possibility this can get even easier. I'm open to the possibility that I could relax even more. I'm open to the possibility that I can relax even more. And that my breath can be smoother and deeper. And that my breath can be smoother and deeper. Awesome. And we're tapping on the top of the head. How about we just my breathing? Calling it is just tap on the top. My breathing. My breathing. Eyebrows. My breath. Actually, let's just my breath. I my breath. Side of the eyes. My breath. My breath. Under the eyes. My breath. My breath. Under the nose. My breath. My breath. Under the lip. My breath. My breath. Collarbones. My breath. My breath. Under the arms, my breath. My breath. Top of the head, my breath. My breath. Let's take in a deep breath. And just really noticing your breathing capacity. I'm closing my eyes. I feel so relaxed. That is wonderful. <laughs> During that tapping, I don't know whether you noticed on the video, I closed my eyes and I just listened to your words. Mm -hmm. That was just, it just happened. It was a natural reaction. I just closed my eyes. I can see your face looks like all of the tension. Your face looks so much smoother and calmer right now too. Like I can really see the shift in you, your body, you look so much more relaxed. So what I would love to do as one final round of tapping with you on this is actually doing the technique that is basically where we just breathe as we hold the tapping points. So instead of going through the entire setup, we're just going to start by putting our hand on the, you know, our, our hand on the top or touch the top of the head point, not even tapping on it, but just touching it and sort of massaging it gently. And just we're going to do an inhale and an exhale. And now when you're ready, moving to the eyebrow points and inhaling and exhaling.
Moving to the sides of the eyes and inhaling and exhaling. Under the eyes, inhaling and exhaling. Under the nose, inhaling and exhaling. Under the lip, inhaling and exhaling. Collarbones. Under the arm. And coming back to the top of the head. And I like to sort of end that or balance that by just putting my hands, both hands over my heart, kind of on my chest. Yeah, just feeling that, just breathing into my heart. And exhaling. How are you doing? I feel I've had a really good sleep. <laughs> that is wonderful. So imagine that it, you probably will have a really good sleep this evening. That with what we've just done, this will allow your body to relax even more. So you'll have to report back to us and let us know how your sleep is. I, I just cannot believe the difference mm -hmm. those few exercises have made me feel. Isn't it incredible? We did maybe five rounds of tapping total, maybe six at the absolute, because I'm just thinking we did, we did sort of the shoulders up, I think two times, maybe like two or three times, and then we did the breathing exercise, and then the touch and breathe. And so it's just amazing what a very, in a very, very short period of time we can shift. And even from just that first round of tapping where we worked on the shoulders up, we went from a seven to a four and your breath went from a five, you know, five in and a six out to an eight in and an 11 out. So just like, it's so effective and it is so and and like a very little bit of tapping can really make a huge difference and it's cumulative it gets it builds on itself so the more you do it the more effective it becomes i mean jennifer this has been absolutely fascinating because when we had a conversation last week i did know a little bit about eft and i had used eft on myself however this week with your breathing techniques, that has just taken it to a whole new level. And I just think people who have trouble sleeping, people, as you say, have maybe got a, a restless mind or got a cold or something. All these things, as you say, somebody who's got a, an allergy to something, particularly in the summer with pollen and the heat, these sort of things, if we can get the res these results with just tapping and vocabulary without having to take medication, that's got to be a lot better for us. Absolutely. And in some cases, it may be that somebody needs to, you know, needs to take a little bit of medication, but maybe because of tapping, they don't need to take as much medication that it is possible, like tapping can really help. And the other thing is like, for example, if we were working with a healing process or something where maybe we were needing to be on some kind of medication to, to heal from something, 
the tapping allows our body to be more resilient, to be more resourced and to to heal more effectively. So it can be a, a substitute for medication for many of us that there are many times where and I will personally start with tapping usually. And then if for some reason it's just like, you know what, I really do need to take an aspirin right now or something, I will. But I'll start with tapping and many, many times, I would say probably eight or nine times out of 10, usually tapping is, is wholly adequate. And I wanted to say you were talking about if people have trouble sleeping. EFT is amazing for allowing our bodies and our minds to settle at night. And the technique that we just used with the touch and breathe, where we went through all of the points and we just inhaled and exhaled, that is a fantastic technique to do when we're getting ready to go to sleep. You can just lie in bed and, you know, maybe start by touching the side of your hand, inhale and exhale. And then just going through all the points and just touching them gently as you inhale and exhale, inhaling peace and calmness, exhaling the tension and worry of the day, exhaling any stress that you've been carrying around, and just really allowing that inhale and that exhale as we touch the points to really help our bodies and our systems to reboot. The beautiful thing, too, is if you're like, you know, half asleep and you're realizing you just need a little bit of help to settle, you can even just visualize that you're touching the points. If you're like too tired to even touch them, you can just imagine that you are touching all of the different points. And a lot of times that even will be effective, especially after you're used to tapping and you know, like you're at, you know what the points are and everything. Jennifer, thank you so much for. Oh, Sheila, it has been such a pleasure. You are so, so welcome. I know I needed this. <laughs> this is what it feels like to be relaxed. This is what it feels I, like to breathe. I think it's one of those things, isn't it? It's a way that we can really help ourselves. It doesn't cost anything. We don't need to go anywhere, you know, make it your own and just give it a go. See he, how you get on. We'll put all the links to your website, to YouTube. People can tap along with you mm -hmm. and we'll make sure all the information is there. Jennifer, thank you so much. We've done two podcasts now. Oh, Sheila, it's been a delight. Oh, thank you so much, Jennifer. You're so welcome. Absolutely brilliant. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed the conversation. Please subscribe on whatever platform you are using. It is free. And if you would like to tell your story, please contact me on allaboutyoupodcast at yahoo.com and let's tell your story.